Of course, overall, the dependence that we have on technology, it is actually frightening because today, since 6 a.m., I have been without electricity, myself, my whole family, whatnot. And in reality, it is so utterly trivial because for 10,000 years, mankind has lived like this. But for us, 12 hours, it's as if we don't know how we're going to survive. We are so dependent on this function. We have forgotten how our own grandparents and 10,000 years before them have lived without that interdependence. So today I wanted to bring up a new technology that is already integrating into our lives and we are becoming frighteningly dependent on this new technology. And this generation, our generation, is going to see the interweaving of this technology to an unprecedented level and we're already seeing it. And it is very important. Every one of us, even those that don't believe in a higher power, they must be talking about this because it is truly frightening. And I'm talking about artificial intelligence, AI. I'm talking about artificial intelligence. Now, what exactly is artificial intelligence and the pros and cons, that's a whole long topic. But to summarize in a nutshell, Artificial intelligence is a relatively new field. It only dates back to almost two decades or a decade and a half, and it's only gained traction in the last few years in particular. And what artificial intelligence is, is us human beings programming processors to essentially think like us. So imagine in realistically five, 10 years, your child or even you having a partner that you can have conversations with, ask information of, find detailed analyses of your particular niche field, and that partner is imaginary. Imagine engaging in deep philosophical conversation, and this partner that you're having a talk with will be able to research as you are saying something, and be able to amass thousands of books instantaneously. And as you ask a question about a totally new field, this partner of yours becomes a global expert. And this is what artificial intelligence is. It's the mechanism, the potentiality to almost not actually create, because only Allah is al-Khaliq, but to program a system whose results even we cannot predict. This is what is frightening. Up until now, we knew exactly what the output would be. Up until now, computers and programming was basically doing a lot of computation super fast. We know exactly what the output's going to be. We could have done it ourselves, except that the computer does it much faster than us, right? What's happening now is that we are allowing a program to program itself and learn as it continues. And this is unchartered territory. Now, uh, already we are seeing the impact of this. Now, by the way, there's two types of AI. Uh, you have uh, AI which is very specific or niche oriented, and this is fairly common already. So for example, we already have uh, the technology, which is a very frightening human technology to be able to translate a verbal speech into any other language. AI can already do this, right? Google can already do this. You can speak into an app, in your conversational English, Urdu, Swahili, in your particular dialect, in your particular region. And this app will now be able to assess your accent, your, your terminologies, your nuances, even your tone, and will then translate into any of the languages it is programmed to do on the spot. This is specific AI, right? Or frightening, already being used by Israel and by China and others, is facial recognition. And again, this is something we think is basic, it's not. Imagine walking down the street of anywhere in the world and the camera catches half of your face it, by an angle. And it's blurry picture. Now AI has already reached a level where it can recognize exactly who you are. And if the governments have the databases, China does and Israel does. And Allahu Alam, our own country most likely does, but they're not saying this. And, and you know, every time you go to the airport, this is exactly what they do, right? So the, to able to capture your image, you will be trackable wherever you are. Wherever you go, just one image anywhere, and 
AI will be able to recognize out of billions of people instantaneously, they'll be able to recognize exactly where you are. We're already using this in medicine. Doctors here can tell us what AI is doing. Amazing technological advances where your sonogram or your MRI or whatever your diagnosis might be that the computer will tap into millions of different data points and be able to analyze far better than any doctor can. It might be possible soon. We won't need medical doctors. Guys, don't be scared because when that happens, you guys will be in charge of it anyway. So jobs will be there. Don't worry. But realistically, you will be better off getting analyzed by an AI doctor than by a real doctor because the AI doctor will have a database that is infinitely larger than any human being. And the AI doctor will have a one-stop speciality right now. If you want to have one specialist, then another, then another, you have to keep on booking five different appointments, go through your this and that. Imagine one computer screen, one camera in front of you, one analysis, everything being done simultaneously. We are literally within a few years away from something like this. This is tangible, realistic niche AI. The more frightening is general AI. And we're heading there now. Chat GPT-4 and others, we're heading there now. And general AI is basically a polymath, a super intellectual genius, a partner, an intellectual partner that you have no idea what is going to come from this. You are talking about all of the specialities of the world combined into one person and you can converse with that person. Imagine something like this. That is where the world is heading and it's way, the way things are happening is just a matter of time. Already chat GPT version four and others, they can do some amazing things that are already frightening. When I'm telling you as a professor, as a lecturer, as a teacher, it's very frightening what is happening already. And this is just the beginnings of, uh, you know, the realities. Now, uh, there's a lot of positives as with all technology. Today's not about the positives. Of the positives, by the way, we just told you medical, medical developments are going to be groundbreaking. Of the biggest positives, we're already seeing this, is the um, uh, uh, driving, the self, self-driving cars, right? This is AI, self-driving cars. To be able to recognize anything on the road and then be able to maneuver and navigate. We've already seen this. I mean, th this is our generation. Few years ago, it was a dream. Now I drive a Tesla. So many people drive a Tesla. You just click the button and you just, I answer my email messages while I'm driving the Tesla. Literally, you know, it's halal, it's legal because my hands, my hands on the road, don't worry. I literally do my WhatsApp. That's why I got the Tesla because of time. Like I'm just literally just doing my WhatsApp and answering email and the, 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 the car is driving automatically on the freeway. I have the full drive version, even on the roads is driving. And this is something we heard about for a decade. Now I have it, we have it. Is the technology already there? And it keeps on improving. Every few days, there's a new version, automatic up upload, and it does some amazing things. So we're already seeing this, this um, reality. There are some challenges and ethical concerns. And we as Muslims need to be very cognizant of this because our Sharia provides an answer for everything. We need to be at the forefront of some of the problems of these uh, new technologies. So I wanted to just bring them up. And then in the end of the day, it's not my area and forte. Other people need to take up and, and help us in this regard. What are some of the problems that AI might bring about? Well, first and foremost, one of the most obvious problems is going to be AI will have to decide who lives and who dies in a rational manner and not an emotional manner. You see, when you are driving, may Allah protect all of us, but you see something and you react on impulse. You swerve, you see a child, you see something, and you just do something on impulse. Generally speaking, we are forgiving of you because what could you do? Generally speaking, no matter what happens, like if it's not your fault, if somebody ran onto the road and you did something and then an accident happened, generally speaking, you might not be criminally responsible. You might be, you know, legally, whatever, but not, nobody's going to look at you as a criminal. Like you couldn't do anything. You're a human being. You just reacted. But you see, AI has zero emotion and AI is doing things at supersonic speed, right? Faster than or at the speed of light to be precise. So you will have to figure out which life is more important. And the AI is going to make a calculation in milli, milli, milliseconds, nanoseconds, and will literally decide, is the life of the driver more important or the life of 
that person on the road. And how will you decide that? Well, some programmers are going to have to have ethical questions. Because in the end of the day, no matter how awkward it is, you have to program the AI to figure out what to do. If there's a child, if there's an elderly man, now we get to the famous you know, um, uh, pr philosophical problem that if you can swerve a, a train with two people in it and you know, in the process save five people, are you allowed to swerve the train? Or should you let the train just go and crash? You know, these famous problems, these ethical problems. Well, right now, when we do it, it's just an, a hypothetical. With AI, it will become a real problem. The car is going straight down, it sees a bunch of school children. You will have to program the AI what it needs to do. And some people will die and some people will live. And this will not be on impulse. This will be a rational decision that somebody programmed into the AI. Right? So this is one of the issues that we're going to have to be thinking about. Already, AI is being used in war. Right now, according to international law, not that it's applying, but still, there is a modicum of human involvement. Right now, according to the UN and the international law, any drones that send bombs, a human must make that decision. So that somebody can be pinpointed a finger, it's your fault. This is now the law of the world, right? It is not allowed to send a bomb on a civilization or a population, whatever it might be, unless and until at the last minute, a human being presses a button. The reason being, obviously, they want to blame somebody or hold somebody accountable. Pause here, not that it helps all the time, we see what's happening, but still, there's a human being that's made that decision. What AI is gonna bring, bring into the picture is why do we need a human to make the decision? What if we need to make a split second decision? We don't need to get involved with a human being. So once again, we're going to get all of these complex problems that are literally solving life and death issues based upon artificial intelligence. Another uh, problem that we get of AI is, and it's already happening to a, a small level, we're going to see this times 100 within a year or two. And that is AI, and this is frightening, and we see this now, figures out who you are based upon your history. AI knows you better than your spouse and your children. This is already true. AI knows what types of videos you like, what types of music, what types of clips, what types of intellectual talks, what type of astaghfirullah, fahish and haram, everything. AI has a profile. And because AI wants you to look at the computer screen, well, because the uh, social media apps want you to look at the computer screen because they want money. AI will then show you what it knows will attract your attention. And what this allows AI to do is to brainwash you. And to keep you cut off from learning outside of your own comfort zone. And we already see this in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Even though, I would say at this stage, it's not being done intentionally. Because all of your news feeds, without exception, when you're going down Twitter and Facebook, all of us in this masjid, our news feed is generally pro-Palestinian. Our news feed is generally people that are sympathizing. Why is that happening? Because of AI. And what you guys need to understand is that pro-Zionist and pro-far-right Christian fanatics who are on a different wavelength, their entire scroll and news feed, exact same time as you, is going to be completely different than you. And here we are, me and you, when we're going down Twitter and Facebook and everything, we're like, why can't everybody else see this? I see it. Why, why is not everybody else seeing what I'm seeing? because they're not seeing what you're seeing. You can follow the exact same two people, but the ones that come afterneath, the ones that come in between, it will be catered upon your own psyche. And therefore, right now it is non-malicious, i.e. the computer algorithm wants to feed you what it knows you'll be interested in reading. And so, you liked a Palestinian protest video somewhere, guess what, the next five days, and you're going to see more pro-Palestinian protests. You're going to say, mashallah, the tide is changing. And it is changing, by the way. But I'm saying, you are in your bubble. Believe it or not, the other side, they're only going to see the news 
you know, uh, items and, and vignettes that are catering to their worldview. And they will form a totally skewed worldview. And they're going to hear from politicians that are pandering to them. And they're going to see advertisers that are pandering to them. And you two could be neighbors next house. And you two could be looking at the exact same screen at the exact same time. But everything is different. And imagine this times 10 months, 10 years. Imagine what's going to happen. Now imagine, which is totally illegal, but it might be happening by one particular government. You can understand which one. Imagine if it is now intentionally done. Right now it's algorithms, random, meaning you can program it and you can give it a try. You can literally give it a try. Look at something of a news item or something you have never been interested in in your life, okay? Do some, you know, Antarctica cruise at the penguins. Just I'm giving you an example, literally. And look at two, three news items. You've never in your life been interested in doing a cruise to the Antarctica to go visit the penguins. Next thing you know, for a few days, little thing popping up there. Did you know this about a penguin? Did you th and then slowly but surely, you get drawn into a whole different world. Now imagine, this is being done to advertise. Right now it's money. One country might be doing it to brainwash. Imagine if powerful interests decided, let's sway American public opinion in a certain way. This is very, very doable. Because what AI can do, it can monitor all of your biases and then figure out how to begin tapping in and swaying you the way that it wants you to be swayed. You will become a pawn in a game that we have no understanding of how deep it can go, right? And this was predicted in a different way by the famous intellectual Noam Chomsky when he wrote his book in 1985 or something, Manufactured Consent, where he said that this is being done by the media at a very low level. But now we're talking about AI assessing your psychological profile, having a detailed analysis. Even your psychiatrist wouldn't know what the AI knows. And it knows exactly how to begin to persuade you to have a different worldview. And this leads us to my next point, and that is, what AI is doing, it is shifting power dynamics. Right now, power is in the hands of the governments, which is also bad. But at least it's a physical, tangible government and you understand. With AI, power is going to go to multi-billion dollar corporations that are operating in extreme privacy. And this is why there's so much tension between Facebook and whatnot and between our governments because the governments are worried. What do you, and the government wants to ban TikTok and whatnot because things are happening beyond their control. AI is going to completely change power dynamics. And the real power will be in the hands of those who have access to all of that data. They will be far more powerful than any government. And when it comes to our Islamic religion in particular, there are a number of specific issues. We've already seen this a few months ago. Somebody attempted an AI fatwa program. It was a disaster of the highest magnitude. You ask it a basic question and it'll give you something totally irrelevant. And so the guy himself had to apologize and say it was just a prototype. But here's the point. What does a prototype mean? It's only a matter of time before you don't need me anymore. <laughs> Yasir Qadi becomes superfluous. Okay. You will have Mufti Chat GPT, Mufti Saab, <laughs> Mufti GPT. And I'm not even joking. This is where this is heading now, right? This is where this is heading, where you will ask your fatwa, your question, and you can even, you'll be able to input. I want the Hanafi response. I want the, this response, that response. And AI will be able to, and here's the scary point, 99% of the time probably be accurate in giving you a response. The problem comes that one time it'll be wrong, it'll be majorly wrong. But they we're heading there. We're heading there. And it's very soon. I have a friend, cannot say too much more about the project. <laughs> Let me just say generically, he's one, a computer geek, nerd, whatever. He's using AI for hadith isnads and an analysis of hadith. And I've seen aspects of this and it is super exciting and super scary all at once. 
where you just put in the hadith and it's going to automatically look at all the books in the database and all of and draw an entire chart for you and then give you its own verdict you don't need ibn hajar or albani and you don't need it all right chat gpt will tell you the isnat and it'll tell you whether it's authentic or not based upon all of these criteria we are already there this is not in one generation this is within a year or two this is right now we are seeing this so the whole globe is changing in this regard and people who do not who want to find problems with islam they're using ai for the wrong stuff as well when it comes to islam you know and again i don't want to get too explicit here but you know the main miracle we have is that our book cannot be reproduced the ai is being done and i know this from my friends friends and whatnot it is being done to try to do something what are you going to do in this regard right these are people that have complete you know nefarious intentions and they're using these types of technologies to try to bring doubts to islam and the muslims subhanallah so we have now a very very different world coming up and if you're aware of what's happening in the last year massive internal scandals have happened within the ai community even last week one of the senior highest level officials resigned in public and said there's no oversight i love this but i'm frightened to death of it what you guys are doing and she didn't say more but she resigned and it caused shock waves because she didn't tell us explicitly what's going on but something happened and 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 and, and, the, and what she was saying is that there is no oversight and you guys are not understanding the ethical issues involved over here so bottom line i know it's not exactly a purely islamic thing but here's my philosophy we can't separate the deen from the dunya muslims have to be aware of this it's going to impact us and it is impacting us if we can't live 12 hours without electricity in a few years ai will be integrated into our phones in a few years ai will be in our houses in a few years we're literally going to be inter interdependent on it right there will be a lot of positives. Can you imagine one of the easiest positives already happening is that schools will not be needed anymore. And AI will take charge of teaching your child exactly in the best manner that your child needs. Your child is strong in one field, AI will zoom over that. It's weak in another, AI will be able to figure out what is the best way to help your child in that maths problem, in that engineering problem, in that algebra problem. AI know exactly what will be the most, you know, uh, um, repetitive routines that need to be done so that your child understands this particular problem and they'll be forever. So can you imagine a tutor specifically for every human being in the world cater to your particular mindset that's a massive positive but in the process by the time this child grows up this ai companion will be even more knowledgeable than his qareen of the ins and the jinn the ai will know more about you than the qareen of your own jinn knows about you right maybe even the jinn will be frightened of the ai because the ai knows about the qareen as well and we as muslims are disconnected from that reality completely but my point to bring it up is just to remind us that Subhanallah, we have to be cognizant. We're living in a very fragile world. We're living in a time and a place where within our lifetimes and anybody above the age of 30, the technological change that had happened in your lifetime, it is exponentially at the speed of light. I mean, I remember, you all remember the, about, about, about the age of 40, even cell phones, we didn't have them. And now the first phones that came, remember the Nokia that came out, right? The little brick that came out, remember that back in the 90s. And then the, now look, we have more power on this phone than NASA did on its supercomputers when it went to the moon. We have more power on this phone than NASA did on the computers that fill this whole room and they use them to go to the moon. We have more power here. We've already seen this in one generation. What is going to happen next? Allahu A'lam. We need to be very, very careful. Final point, which is truly terrifying. One of the biggest concerns that ethicists have about AI is that once you give AI that much power, AI will make choices that might be logical and rational, but completely unethical. Because AI is not interested in ethics. And some of those choices might even bring about types of destructions to human species. And there's a frightening uh, 
science fiction novel by Isaac Asimov in which the computers take over the world. What is it called? I forgot. I robot. I forgot it was. I wrote it. Read it as a kid. But he predicted this: that a time will come when humans are going to be fighting the machine, and the machine will know more than the human beings. This is the reality we are facing here. And wallahi, one wonders, perhaps it's better than that we don't go down all of that route and we just live our simple lives so that once electricity is gone, we don't even know how to light a candle anymore, right? Maybe our ancestors had it more wiser and better that they could actually live a simple and easy life. Allahu alam what the right answer is. In any case, I wanted to bring up to you some difficult issues. And by the way, I will inshallah be presenting on an AI conference uh, next year inshallah about issues of ethics. So I'm doing my own research in this regard. If any of you are experts in this regard, please come to me to benefit me so that I can uh, get some ideas as well. Jazakumullah khair until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.